Hi right, guys, I'm back. We're going to talk about Arch Radio. All right, um, what we're going to do is when we get to a point where we've tried countless things and and just seems to be hitting a, a roadblock. Sometimes going back to the basics is what is in store. And what I mean by that is just go back and start from scratch and, and treat it as a new problem. Uh, first time being seen and kind of forget about what you've done already and just get back just doing some basic troubleshooting. And of course one of those things can be doing a voltage checks and making sure that they're within a reasonable uh, proximity of what is shown on the schematic. And what I mean by that is within plus or minus 20% is perfectly fine. Now, the other way, the other thing to do, assuming that uh, your voltage seems to check out just fine, then what you want to do is we need to isolate this problem. Now, we have a motor boating problem. But that really is just a another it's an oscillation is what it is a low frequency oscillation and what causes an, uh, something to oscillate any amplifier tube can go in oscillation if to become an oscillator is if you take part of the output and feed it back into the input in phase so that it helps out so in other words any amplifier tube, if you feed out some of the plate, what's coming out of the plate, the output, back into the grid so that it is in phase, then if you do enough of that, it will go in oscillation. Now, a little level, low level of it won't. Now, the standard thing for motor boating generally is decoupling caps acting up on you. Now, one of the, in this radio, usually you will find motor boating more in the audio section, but it can be anywhere in a radio. But decoupling caps are like this guy right here. This point one, C25, going to ground. They're basically any cap going to ground that comes off the plate or the screen is generally the ones that we're most concerned about. In the output tubes, uh, basically you do have uh, this .001 and this .001. They're hooked to the cathode, or they actually hooked to ground. They're going to ground here, feeds around, goes down to ground. Which took me off the screen right there. Now, can it be one of your capacitors bed that you put in new? Yes, it can be. But until we actually decide that, we need to look at a few other things. First, we need to isolate it. So the, my suggestion to you, and here's what I would do. I want to isolate where it's at. Now, since this has got a push-pull, and it's using a phase inverter to do it, and it's got driver tubes, uh, one of the easiest things to do is pull this tube out, the 6Q7, just get it out of there. What that does is isolate everything this way from this way. Come in above C29, the grid side. You, know, you don't want to come in here because you're going to have to deal with the, the B+. The feed a signal in here, an audio signal. Now, I don't know for sure what kind of equipment you got. Um, I do know that I believe you do have, or I've seen on there, a WR50B RCA signal generator. But most signal generators, not all, but most, will have the ability to have you take off their modulation 
pull out of the out of the generator. The WR50B definitely has it. It's a uh, connection that's below the mo uh, where you turn turn it on your percent mod modulation uh, knob. It says modulation in or out. Uh, <coughs> and you can pull right from it and it will send you um, the 400 Hertz that's in there and you can feed that into here and see what it sounds like now here's where your scopes can come in handy the ultimate best way of doing this is to have oscilloscope and a du uh, preferably a dual trace with a couple uh, probes and the reason why is, is signal generators especially signal generators and modulation that they feed out is usually not a real pretty wave so if you was just to look at the output maybe it sounds alright to you maybe you're or maybe not and you want to look at it it may look not really all that pretty but it could be just simply because you're not feeding it with something real pretty so if you actually connect the generator in here just modulation feed it in here and also connect your scope here on one channel and then come to your output and I don't care where you pick up output you can pick off all the plates you can pick up probably the voice coils is one of the best places and the easiest play place and pick it up there remember that if everything's working right it will have a definite gain increase you know, you've got a push pull amp it's going to really increase the gain so you have to adjust your um, vertical sensitivity down in other words the volts per division up to you know like five volts per division or more uh, to pick it up but what the idea of this is is if everything's working all right whatever signal you're representing here other than the fact it's increasing the amplitude which it should you know increase in gain should be pretty much the same as what you're putting in it should look the same now granted if the signal is you know not a real pretty sine wave and it's got a few little crooks and stuff in it that don't look all that pretty those will be amplified so they'll look worse on the output but as long as they look similar just other than the fact that the gains increased then most likely this is working now one of the best ways of doing it is if you have an audio generator and the reason why I say that is at 400 Hertz it may not you may have the motor boating issue here this may be where it's actually at but at 400 Hertz maybe it don't want to it may not want to until it gets above say a thousand Hertz or somewhere in that range so with an audio generator you can sweep across the uh, various frequencies now if you got a function generator they'll work as an audio generator just fine just feed a sine wave into it but they will go down most of those will go down low enough frequency to be in the audio range <coughs> but suffice to say if you don't have either one you just got something like a 400 Hertz and that's it at least you can find out if everything seems to be working all right here and if it does look decent sounds decent and everything then we'll we'll for the time being consider this all right the next step pull the IF tube out plug the 6Q7 back in we want to feed a signal in right here on the um, wiper on the volume control what that's doing is making use of this triode preamplifier or first AF so to see how it sounds and see how it looks and, and everything seems to be alright if everything's okay there then we go to what they call the high side of the, of the volume control. This is the side that's hooked to the C27. This is where the signal comes in to the volume control. We want to connect there. Now remember, once you're connected there, now the volume control works for you. So you can adjust it through and make sure it sounds smooth and everything seems to be okay there. And also make sure that you're getting the signal out and still no motor boating if everything works all right there with this, the IF tube out I want always to keep things isolated 
So with the IF tube out, you can try first feeding the signal at this diode, and you know which one it is. It's the diode coming off T2. It's not the one going to the cathode, but the other diode, I think it's pin 5. Or, but anyway, um, what, at this point, you're going to go up to 455 modulated, 455 kilohertz modulated signal. Because now that's what's going to be that the diode would normally see. We want to make sure everybody's working, all this circuitry is working correctly. And again, no motor boating. If everything seems to be working all right, you're getting a signal out, you can hear it, it responds to the volume control, everything seems to be okay, then we move to the input, the plate of T2. Now here you want to put a, a cap in to, to keep any back B plus from going in your generator. But feed into here and see if you get any problems. Again, the oscilloscope comes in real handy because you can keep an eye on this signal and see what it looks like. See if you get any changes in that audio signal. It should stay the same for the most part. Now there's, you know, a few filtering caps and stuff might clean it up a little bit, maybe, but otherwise it should be a decent signal getting back out here. Once you know, and if everything's working all right, then we're going to now plug in our tube, our 6U7 IF tube, with a grid disconnected. I want to feed in the grid with it disconnected the signal. Now she will not be biased properly but she should work and see if you have any problems. The thing is you want to take a good eyeball at what you're getting output and when you plug that grid on and then redo that signal see if some, anything changes in the output. It, it might get stronger but what we're looking for is any distortions, any weird other signals in it, any, anything that just don't look right, that isn't audio or what shouldn't be part of the regular audio. By this point you should be used to seeing what kind of signal you're getting there. Plug the grid back on and see what you get. That'll be feeding it into, the, into here with the secondary hooked up then at that point. You can feed in right at the plate as far as the next thing to do, if you do keep the 6K8 out, when you do plug this tube back in, I want the 6K8 out, even with and without the grid hooked up, because I don't want anything back here that could possibly affect this signal. When you get to this point, if everything seems to be fine, even with the 6K8 out, the 6K8 out, you can feed a signal in here again, just like you did here without the tube in, see what it looks like and what it sounds like. At this point, if everything's fine, plug the tube in, leave the grid cap off. Feed the signal in there. Again, it's not biased right, but it should put a signal out. Plug the cap on. Again, this time this tube will be out. We're continually isolating. With the grid cap on, this tube out, Check it again, see how it works. Um, at that point, if we're not seeing anything, we can start feeding from some of these coils, like right here. We can feed the signal in with this tube out and see what we get. We can put the tube in feed with the grid cap off and with the grid cap on. Whenever you start, wherever you start picking up this noise and seeing it, at that point stop. Let's say, let's say you notice it right in this area, just, just to pick a place, say the IF section. If after you plug this tube in and no matter where you're 
you know, say maybe you're feeding the signal in here and you start getting the noise. Everything else is disconnected. So you just got this tube and everything downstream. You start getting the noise. <clears throat> At that point, what I want you to do is pull this tube out. You got this one out and this one out, and now you just got this circuit. That is all you've got. You can pick up and receive a signal here and feed a signal in here and see if it's in the tube. You can receive a signal here and feed it in here. See if it's in the IF cans or anything associated with them. This will be the first tube that has a screen voltage problem. The other question I have now is what's going on. I know early on you talked about this resistor getting pretty darn hot. Now, I believe it's a 5 watt, so remember, 5 watts is a lot of heat. Uh, anybody who has a night light with the small screw-in light bulbs, like used to be for, you, you've seen the same style that was for Christmas lights, except they'd be colored. Those are 4 watt. And if you leave those on for, you know, 15 minutes and grab a hold of one, it will burn you badly. I mean, it gets extraordinarily hot. So a 5 watt, you know, resistor, say dissipating 4 watts is going to be mighty hot. If this seems to be, as long as it's not smelling or discoloring, it's probably fine. But if you honestly think that there you may have too much current draw here, then what you can do is measure the current here and see what you've got just to make sure that everything seems to be fine. The current that's being drawn through here should not be more than the current of what's being fed. To this screen, to here, which is D2 and 4, and to here. You can look these tubes up. You can look up the standard plate voltage and screen voltages. They'll have it pretty close. You can look what kind of current should be normally being drawn add those three currents together and that should be what's going through this. Now you do have a dropper right here of 35k that will add just a little bit to that current but that will give you a ballpark figure for the current that should be going through that. Now one last little thing that I want to talk about and I, and I, I keep coming back to this now one other thing you can do, and I, I, I told you this on the phone and someone in the comments on your video had told you, uh, since you've got a radio that is very similar in design, not exact, but similar, that you pulled the IF out and tried it and it still didn't help any, <coughs> compare it as it sits. It's wire dressing, everything, every little teeny nip picking little thing. You know, how short are the leads, how long are the leads and all the components, how they're laying in there, how the wire dressing is ran, all the different wires, everything. Just check and compare it to the radio you've got, any th at least of the similarities parts of the radio. I know it's, there are two different radios and they're similar but there is some differences in them. So those parts there really are truly different. The wire dressing may be different and may not work for yours. But the other parts that are very similar, they're exactly the same circuitry. That wire dressing, see if you're matching out. And that includes component placement, component lead length, and so on. The other thing, and I'm going to sound like an old broken record here, but the way decoupling caps work is they've got to feed the ground and they've got to have a good ground and they got to have good ground at the signal strength in voltage peak to peak of what's going to be going across them going through to that ground it may seem like you've got a good ground there at the low voltage of a small meter like this also if you decide to go here which is the continuity test to check your uh, grounds don't ohms the other thing to do with this 
is we're looking for a super sensitive sit situation on on this. So we want to pop the leads together because these leads are part of this. See, it's got 0.1 ohm. What you can do now it goes to zero, but you can also hit relative, and that will automatically zero this out. So then, when you're checking whatever, it will be if it is zero, it will be zero, and not 0.1 ohm or 0.01 ohm or whatever. But we want to know for sure that everything. But also, this can lie to you. It's low voltage some of the signal coming through could be high enough it could be 30 40 volts peak to peak could be enough to break down that ground if any one of the decoupling caps grounds break down at that point they're not working anymore and you get your motor possible motor boating so this is you know I, I keep coming back to this because all right, number one, there was a reason why they did things the way they did it. Um, back in the day when this radio was built, and any radio in this time period, management didn't have as much say-so in the design team. So whether an engineer decided to use 100 feet of wire in the radio or, or 150 feet of wire in the radio, it was left up to the engineer whether he decided to, how he decided to do things was always left up to him even if it cost more or cost less. If he decided that he wanted ceramic for say the mixer tube or oscillator tube, ceramic put in there for a um, tube socket, more expensive, but he got to say so. You know, whatever he decided he got. Your radio a lot of them tube sockets, ground was directly at the socket to the chassis. I keep coming back thinking that they had a good reason for that. The other thing too is on some of your sockets, and you showed this in some of your videos, some of the sockets, several pins are ground, uh, hooked together internally in the socket. It's possible, at least we're checking, to make sure those connections are good. You're only grounding one and assuming that all those connections because one showed that that's what it's doing that they all should be okay. But if one of those are broke it could cause you problems. And just double check it and just make sure everything looks good and everything measures out good on that too. But you may end up having to deal with all these grounds or at least some of them and having to deal with doing something a little better with grounding. You may have to go back to the way the factory was. Now, I know that you was concerned about soldering directly to the chassis and not painting it right there in corrosion. Um, this is something that I don't know how many people actually know. Some very old timers probably know this, but you tear into these radios and you look underneath you'll find a lot of flux residue. They left that there for purpose. Mainly because of protection of the metal right around that solder joint. Uh, no matter what kind of coating, whether they did cadmium plating, which is pretty darn thin, it's not real thick, and will break down at six, seven hundred degrees, it'll break down when they solder to it it generally just breaks down but generally they just ground it off when they would solder to the chassis at that point but or they use paint or they use whatever they would clean up that area and then solder to it and they left the flux they left it there for a purpose and that purpose was is any metal that could be still exposed that could ever take a chance of wanting to think about corroding or rusting the flux protected it because flux will keep the air away from it and moisture. So on those, don't clean up the flux, leave it. It's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. It was there for protection. So basically what I'm saying is make sure every ground is to metal. No paint, no nothing. No 
washers cutting through or anything else just go ahead and scrape the paint off it is better um, if you're really concerned about it after you fasten everything back down you can always paint over top of the paintbrush but it will never really corrode on you it won't ever rust really if that radio is ever in a situation where that could underneath that chassis and the radio being used on, a, on and off type basis then you've got other problems or whoever's using the radio has other problems to worry about like grid caps is going to corrode on them and stuff like this so I, I just because if any one of these grounds are not good or all of them are not good or this guy right here this is your primary ground if he's not good then everything's off the table because all the other grounds are not good so any one of those decoupling caps will not be grounding properly again back to the motor boating so these are I, I I'm not trying to sound like a broken record on this but it is vitally important check your wire dressing to the other radio get a general idea what's going on sometimes lead lengths need to be long sometimes short you know it, it varies um, check run through what I just said about checking every stage as you go and if you run into it the minute it starts motorboating that's where you stop it's got to be that stage that you last stage you put into the circuit that's the guy now isolate it completely and check it by its lonesome and start looking for what could be going on there uh, if everything doesn't seem to show up I mean it's just it's just going to be there no matter what it could be these grounds again back to the ground issue the last little thing is the possibility any one cap or two could be bad even though they're brand new caps and you can go through and test them uh, best with something with that you can do a full leakage on them uh, but you can check them and, and see if they're leaking or bad or even possibly open or any number of things uh, at that point I think I gave you enough stuff to worry about and to do and to have fun with um, you know there's a lot of decoupling a lot of a lot of stuff going on in here plus also there's some this is a basically a current limiting resistor here to limit and limit the voltage and it's acting as a voltage divider with this resistor here to keep this stable uh, you know the other thing last little thing is is make sure your tube pins are clean just a little simple thing there so this has really been a long video I don't have a whole lot else at this point until we know more of what's going on um, if you do all these things and check everything and double check it and triple check it uh, then we'll come back to seeing what else can be if it's still giving you troubles so I hope it's some help and uh, I guess I'll wait and see your next video or see what you come up with and uh, again you can give me a call anytime and uh, you know that and so anyway until the next video guys I'll see you on the next video and goodbye